This show is clean, pretty much. Hey, 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 Mike's Daily Podcast. Episode 671. Hello, it's Mike Matthews broadcasting from the last place on earth, located somewhere in Podcast Valley, California. Today, Madam Ruta Vega, Valentino Bison Bentley, plus it's the return of the feature into an interview where I speak to legendary, prolific, and nice guy singer songwriter Chris Mills talking to us from Brooklyn and Neil Young did something interesting Mike's Daily Podcast and did you know that there is something on my foot that is festering Mike's Daily Podcast no but I had to make that rhyme so luckily nothing on my foot's in a bad way hey the brewmaster did something the other day when we did our show he announced that he was dating a Wiccan. That's pretty bizarre. But you know what's freaking awesome? Is that we're back. After, oh. Mike's Daily Podcast. Yeah, the last show we did, an interesting thing happened. You know, where we talked to Clem, that racist redneck. Well, Mike's I don't think Daily anybody listened to the show. Podcast. At all. I looked at yeah. what we call in the biz statistics, and there was absolutely zero listens at all. But Mike, I listened to the show. Yeah, you probably hated it, and that's why you were able to somehow make it disappear, the fact that you had listened. You made a negative statistic. That's how bad last show was. People that listened to it were able to withdraw their listens. So it was... Not and you know what? It's it only gets better from here. Clem, it it is just uh well not really well appreciated amongst the people of the world, his views. So I can't wait till he's back on again. Another interesting thing happened. I was on Facebook. Oh play that thing. Right now. Yeah, so somebody wrote this on Facebook. I thought it was so funny. They said this might be My last match profile before it expires. Boo! So this is what she wrote. She wrote the following. Hey, ladies, in parentheses, gents, it's your lucky day. You've come across the profile that could change your life. Have you ever wanted to be whisked away to an exotic island where the cell reception is great and you can post photos of yourself doing exciting things for a few minutes before going back inside? Better yet, What if you didn't have to take photos of yourself because the person with you, your partner in crime, wants only to take photos of you? Only those comfortable with nudes need apply. You'll receive shots for your modeling portfolio. Well, sound like paradise, she writes. Read on. I'm looking for a little spitfire to bring some excitement into my life. You know, for now. Heaven knows you won't look like that forever. So personality is a non-issue. Hell, we could be divided on all things if we come together when we need to. Know what I mean? In exchange for the putting up with my deplorable, dated outlook on life, you will be wined, dined, clothed, tuned out, used. Goes both ways, of course. Don't give me that innocent face, Missy. And occasionally demoted. Like big boats? Did you know you can rent those? Like fancy shoes? I could always fight the charges. <laughs> Why the hell would I be buying Lobotines? Lobotons. You know what I'm trying to say. Like tough guys? You have no idea how many psychological issues I have. Like reading? Please message me so I can block you, lesbian. I enjoyed that. I thoroughly enjoyed reading that post. It makes no sense and I love it. Okay, on to something that kind of makes sense. Look who just walked in. Hello, my friends. This is Matt W. The big old match.com doesn't do anything for me. You haven't met anybody on there? No, my friends. Well, I did meet this one guy. He makes Brussels sprout ice cream. And you found that offensive? No, I found that attractive. I dated him for a couple of weeks. Oh, that's fantastic. Yes, it is, my friends. Did you see there's other dialogue on the next page? Did you learn that dialogue? Oh, no, Michael Rasu, I didn't learn the dialogue. I only learned what was on this page. 
Okay. You're destroying the fourth wall right now. People can see right through us and that we didn't prepare. Are they going to listen to this podcast in the future? Are they going to make negative listens on this podcast because of you, Madam Rutabaga? Yes, they fear. How do you feel? I feel bad. It's all your fault. Thank you. Look who else just walked in. Oh, damn, Mike. This is Valentino, the bashing attendant. And this is Bison Bentley. Do you know that? Mike, I would not date a Wiccan because those people do not believe in God. Well, I, you know what? I don't know exactly what they believe in. I think it has some something to do that's not exactly the, the typical Judeo-Christian belief system. But, you know, there, I've met... Uh, I was I dated one. I I really did date a Wiccan in real life, and she was a very sensible, normal person, and she was pretty hot. But she was cheating on me. Mike, that's a terrible, sad story that you just told, Day. Yeah. Why would you ever want to date a Wiccan again? Do you know that? Well, maybe it was uh, just a that was her value system that just did not feel like treating me with respect so I hopefully won't run into that again Michael Matthew was the girl that posted that Facebook post in the ridiculous random posts ridiculous random posts. yes that thing she, she, was she a victim no I don't think so she just a funny writer and I think she's going to meet a lot of interesting guys Possibly women as well through that match.com post that she did. Com post. <laughs> so, Neil Young. Wait, Mike, before you tell that story about Neil Young, I have an idea. Okay, go on. What is it? I believe that we can make money with the last place on Earth if we create a resort on a brand new island day. You, uh, there's a brand new island? What? I know Saturn has a new moon. Who cares about that? I think we should build a resort on a new island that just formed they what about the new moon though uh, saturn let's go there forget about that i don't want to go into outer space i might run into nern again nern uh nern died don't you remember because of madame rutabaga she overloaded his brain wasn't that what happened michael Masu had nothing to do with it and i'm not the viking okay uh well let's go to this island then and since you're afraid, you're space-averse, apparently. So let's go to this new island. Where is it? I've got it here on the map. Just let's launch and fly day. Okay, let's do that. We're going to do that, Bison Bentley? We're going to do that! Do you know that? <sighs> Everybody, stop talking at once. It's too much. Let's go. Okay, we've launched the last place on Earth, and now we're landing on this island. Uh, it's apparently out here in the middle of the ocean, as islands tend to be, and we're crash-landing. <laughs> And also, that, wait a minute, there's really no island here. What are you talking about? Whoa. Yeah, it's an island. It's that plastic bag island. You know, all the plastic that's in the middle of the ocean. It's in this one spot right here. And we can build a resort on top of the plastic day. Yeah, what a great idea. You're so smart, Valentino. Do you know that? Okay, I think you guys are having group think right now because it's a horrible idea. that This plastic mess, as horrible as it is, it will never be able to support... The last place on Earth, that's why we're taking on water. And we need to get the heck out of here. Launch. Oh, I'll never let you talk me into anything else again. Man, we're landing back in Podcaster Valley, California. Well, Mike, it was an idea. Just an idea. It was a, a theory. Let's go to the moon around Saturn that just formed. You mean Peggy? No. Hey, it's really called Peggy. I would think a name like Pegasus would be more, you know cosmic but they went with peggy because the guy who discovered it it was on his mother-in-law's birthday whose name was peggy in other news so what happens when a rock and roll legend promotes a music player uh is it an mp3 player no it is a music player in a world where the ipod and its smartphone cousins already dominate the market well according to cnn.com neil young has a music player which promises high quality sound, higher quality than any of its competitors, and it has become the third biggest Kickstarter campaign in the history of Kickstarter. Crowdfunding for Neil Young's Pono Music, P-O-N-O, closed 
yesterday having raised more than $6.2 million. The campaign's goal of $800,000 was blown away in less than 24 hours after it launched in March. Neil Young, a longtime critic of what he calls the underwater listening experience of compressed MP3 digital music, thanked backers on the campaign's homepage yesterday, saying, You have helped to set the stage for a revolution in music listening. He also said, Finally, quality enters the listening space so that we can all hear and feel what the artists created, the way they heard and felt it. The article says that the idea behind Pano is to boost digital music from the compressed and lossy formats to high-quality resolution. Pano will stream music in 24-bit, 192 kilohertz sound, brighter and more present than the sound provided by MP3s or even CDs. It will include both an online music store and player. The Pano player, which will come with 128 gigabytes of storage, will sell for $399. By comparison, the 64 gigabyte iPod Touch sells for the same price. And the iPod Classic, with 160 gigabytes of storage, sells for $249. High resolution digital albums at pondomusic.com are expected to cost between $15 and $25. The site says all major record labels are on board. They're beginning to expand the amount of music that's recorded in high quality digital formats. Neil Young introduced the system at the South by Southwest Music Festival back in March, and he has endorsements from Tom Petty, Eddie Vedder, Sting. He says it's been a long time coming. It was not easy getting this far, but you made it happen by supporting Pano's vision for better listening. Pano wants to preserve the history of music in all of its beauty and expression for all time forever. What do you think? Is it a big deal? To have music, do you find MP3s sound like they're underwater or do you care? A friend of mine who's a bit of an audiophile says that, well, he says that you can't detect it. You'd have to have hearing like a bat. But then others, of course, are like, no, it loses warmth. That's why records are so great because you have the analog and the analog captures all the sound. So what do you think about it? Email me, mikesdailypodcast at gmail.com. We read your comments on the section emails from email. You can also email me there if you'd like to be a guest on the show or if you would like to sponsor the show, mikesdailypodcast at gmail.com. And then there's the website, mikesdailypodcast.com, that features now the new radio, Mike's Daily Podcast Radio, which you can find there on the left-hand side of the page. Click on that. You can hear all the podcasts that we've done recently as well as some cool music thrown in, too, to kind of balance it out, make it a radio station. It's Mike's Daily Podcast Radio. And then there's links to where to find us on iTunes. Subscribe to us in iTunes. When I post a new show, you'll get it instantly. There's also links to where to find us on the Facebook page. Like the Facebook page. And when I post a new show, share it with your friends so more people find out about us. It's a great way to support Mike's Daily Podcast. Another great way to support it is purchasing something through the Amazon deal of the day. It's a great deal on something that they got. They throw an item up there. And if you purchase it through the portal at mikesdailypodcast.com, we see a little bit of money through that. Uh, There's also great places to catch us on Spreaker, SoundCloud, Stitcher, YouTube. We're on Mixcloud and Yelp and Twitter, Podomatic. You can also read the blog and the daily podcast picture there at mikesdailypodcast.com. Into an interview. Hello. Chris Mills, it's Mike Matthews from Mike's Daily Podcast. Hey, how's it going? I'm not really Scottish. That was a really bad Scottish brogue. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, I, was, I, was, I was suspicious. I, you know, I, or I could do it like I'm from Norway. And try to (laughs) dupe you, even though you lived in Norway for a while, right? I like sounds more Swedish, I think. I well, I (laughs) they 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 sound different than the Swedish, really. They do, yeah, yeah. Oh, how? Absolutely, I don't, I don't know. Oh, I don't know how that works. Okay. Well, thanks for <laughs> thanks for being on my on Mike's Daily Podcast. I am no uh, problem. I, I heard the song bloomed. And then I did all this research online, and I'm like, oh, my gosh, you've been around a long time. Sorry, I'm coming late to the game. Oh, no, that's okay. Better late than never. You have a rich and fantastic history. Oh, thank you. 
it, it all starts with a crystal meth death band. <laughs> Yeah, that was a speed metal band I was in in like high school in like 1991. That is the best high school metal band name ever. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, we're Crystal Meth Death. Here we go. That's that's yeah, that's pretty much how it went. What was the singing like? Like you know, like <gasps> kind of. Oh yeah, really? Oh yeah, <laughs> yeah, like Sepultura and like all that kind of stuff. Wow. Well, you have such a... Uh, I really enjoy your singing style. You don't sing... Oh, thank you. You don't sing like a, a Muppet. Because uh, a lot of people say that Speed Death Metal bands sound like Kermit on Acid or something. <laughs> but you don't... You sound really like good. The River Bottom Nightmare Band. The, the River Bottom Nightmare Band. Yeah. From Emin Otter. They were like quite kind of... Like, they weren't like a death metal band. Oh. But they were like... They were they were very hardcore Muppets, band. <laughs> and and so yeah, but you have a great singing style and and songwriting style and and okay, so it all started with you in a town called Collinsville, Illinois. Is this yeah. True? Do you remember much of it? I know you moved around a lot. Oh yeah, no, I mean it was just a little town in the Midwest. Um, you know, not a whole lot to do. It was kind of it was near St. Louis, but but it was uh, pretty rural, pretty uh, yeah, pretty boring. There were a lot of people. We did a lot of we played a lot of music. Everybody kind of played within the music. Cause there was really nothing else to do, so there was like tons of bands ah. when I was growing up, and uh, and yeah, it was it was great. We would just you know play house parties on the weekends and practice during the week and get into fights and steal each other's girlfriends and you know do all that stuff wow i didn't do any of that i feel i really was neglected i was living in southern california too i could have been doing all this stuff but i yeah no well, this is southern illinois crazy so yeah. so that helped shape a bit of a trade-off and so that really did that spark the whole songwriting with you in the beginning yeah, kind of, kind of, yeah. I mean, I, I was always writing songs from the first band that I was in when I was, like, 15. I was always writing stuff, whether it was, you know, whether I was in a metal band or, like, alternative rock band or whatever. Um, you know, playing The Cure and writing, you know, and listening to Dylan and writing stuff. And Yeah, I always did it. Now, I wanted to ask you, the wall-to-wall -wall sessions... Yeah. That was recorded and mixed entirely to two track tape? Yeah. Yeah, it was like three days, seventeen piece bands, like full string and horn section. And uh yeah, it was it was crazy, but it was fun. It was like one of the best three days of my life, I think. You know. Um Wow. What ins yeah. what inspired that? Um, economics, I think. <laughs> <laughs> the price of studio time um, but also just like you know it, that's that's the way that the records used to be made yeah um, for a long long time and um, I'd done a lot of stuff on records before that you know when Pro Tools was kind of coming in spending too much time kind of laboring over all of the little things that you can labor over when you do something on a computer and you have endless amounts of revisions that you can make and endless numbers of tracks that you can lay down. Um, and so I kind of was tired of that and I just wanted to kind of play it and record it as it was played and, and, and just have that be a representation of that, you know, those particular days that we were in the studio. Um, so that's so that's what we did. And, and it turned out really well. It really, it's one of my favorite records that I've done, I think. And you know when you, when you're recording live like that, and it's like a live performance, it's it's like you're doing a concert, and there's like endorphins, right? There's it's like you don't have oh, yeah. a, a net where you can just go back and re-record. You you have to do it now, type thing. And yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, we only did one or two takes of each song, um, and you know, there's virtually no editing or anything like that. Um, so yeah, you just kind of had to play it 
Right, but but all the guys that I work with are are all really are really good. That record has a lot of like Chicago sort of orchestral and jazz guys who are really you know who also play indie rock and weird experimental music and stuff. So they were all like really high level kind of guys, um, and and so it made it really easy. It was all uh, I worked with my buddy David Naylor on that. He, he's done a lot of like arrangements for me in the past and and um and so he had it all re- scored out and really sort of meticulously done so we just kind of you know sat down and, and and sort of read the charts down and and, and it stuck oh wow so the chicago music scene is is pretty good oh it's great it's the best i live in new york now but but no chicago's amazing huh. absolutely amazing best best place to play music in the world, I would say. Really? In my opinion. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. I have to check that out. Yeah. Okay. Well, tell me... Are you in Southern California I, now? I'm in actually Northern California in the Bay Area. Ah, uh, okay. So, you um, know, when you're playing San Francisco or something, I'm going to come see you. You just missed me. I was just at the makeout room like two weeks ago. What? Yeah. Oh. It was amazing. It was mind-blowing. I have still not seen a show yet at the makeout room. Oh, yeah. It's great. I love the place. Did you get to make out with anyone? Um, no, I'm not allowed to make out on the road anymore. I mean, was your wife there? No. No, <laughs> she was back here with the baby. Oh. Oh. Yeah. Wow. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you very much. Well, my research sucks because I didn't uncover that part. I knew you were married, well, but I didn't get the new. De- it's a new development. Oh, and, I don't, and we don't. I mean, she's like almost. She'll be a year next month. So it's not that new. Oh, but um, yeah. And I don't. I don't put a lot of like pictures of her on the internet or anything like that. Does she have any uh, musical proclivities yet? I don't know. She yeah. she likes to bang, start to bang things, start to hit things on other things. So she's going to be a drummer. Uh, Maybe, hopefully. Or pianist. I hope so. A drummer would be great. Oh, that's ex- that's so neat to see them develop and and all these yeah. all the little personality starts emerging and that's yeah. I don't it's have pretty ki- funny. I don't have kids, but this is what I'm observing from all my friends that have had kids. I'm like, oh, so this yeah. is what they. This is incredible. Human being. <laughs> no, it's great. She's she's she's. She's really, she's fun to hang out with. She's really funny. She's, I can't tell if she's smart or not yet. I want her to start talking so I can tell if she's, <laughs> you know. Yeah. <laughs> she's, she's dumb. <laughs> <laughs> she, you know what? She's beautiful. And that's all that counts. Yeah, if she starts talking and sounds like Honey Boo Boo's mom, that would. Oh, my God. Yeah. You know, but you never know. You never know what they're going to be like. Right. Until, you know, until later. But you'll love them no matter what. I guess. We'll see. Not if she's, like, <laughs> racist or something. <laughs> then that'd I be, draw the line. That'd be a few caveats. If she grows no, up to be... I mean, she's going to be amazing. Hopefully. I hope. Yeah. I mean, you know, <laughs> I, I'm sure she will. She won't t- grow up to be Ann Coulter or anything. That will be. Yeah. We have absolutely nothing to base that on, but let's just hope. <laughs> Let's just hope that she turns out all right. I'm sure, well, it'll be fine. Of course. Well, speaking, Why wouldn't it be? Speaking, <laughs> I'm sure it will. The genetics hold uh, that they will. And she'll listen to your albums and go, oh, this is cool. I want to do that. Yeah. I'm sure. It'll be great. And you can tell her stories about the road and about what you should and shouldn't do if you're, you know, a performer on the road and all yeah. that. And so on. some tips and whatnot. Tell me about your other baby, Alexandria. Ah, the new record. Um, well, it's amazing. Now, um, I don't know. It's it's it's, it's, it's my first full length that I've done in in a few years. I recorded. It. I went back to the Wall to Wall Studios in Chicago and I recorded mm. it there um, with some friends of mine. Uh, one Norwegian. I used to work a lot in Norway. I used to go over and play music in schools over there, and I met a guy over there who who was also a fan and then also a really amazing musician and then also a really exceptional producer. So we kind of worked on stuff when I would be over there. 
and then we decided to go ahead and make the record, and so he came over here. Is that Krister Knutson? Krister Knutson, yeah. Knutson. Yeah, you can pronounce the K. Oh, Knutson. that's such Knutson. a relief. All these years right? I've seen the K, and I've had to block it from my voice saying it. Yeah. That's not Knut Rockney, I don't think. <laughs> I think that's just Newt. Oh. I don't know. I think it's a case-by-case case <laughs> scenario. <laughs> but I can say with Krister... Knutson. With Christer Knutson, absolutely. So Christer is an amazing songwriter and an all-around good guy. And um, he plays a lot of the guitar um, on the record and uh, on the piano and sings the back of vocals. Okay. And, uh, and then I use a drummer that I play with here in New York named Conrad Meisner, who plays with Brandy Carlisle and, and Laura Cantrell and the Silos and, and people like that. Oh. And then... My buddy Ryan Hembry, who has played bass for me for years and is from Chicago. And uh, and yeah, we did it. We recorded about like four days, I think. And um, and it was mixed by Ryan Freeland, who also works with like Ray LaMontagne and Joe Henry and people like that. He did oh, Joe album. Henry. Yeah, Joe Henry's got a new record coming out. Oh. Yeah. I, the, the, the do, do you know at the end of one of his albums It's like you have to fast forward And then you hear this We'll meet again Don't know where uh, Don't know when Very, you know, Dr. Strange lovey And <laughs> and then you hear this voice say Damn it, I didn't want the orange sarsaparilla And I'm like, what? I, I love that about him <laughs> Oh, cool! Yeah, no, he's amazing. He's amazing. Wow. Um, yeah. So that was so. So that's how the record was made, and it's about you know, it's I am I I've been doing this for a while. So a lot of it is about kind of like looking back and moving forward and traveling and you know, lost love and new love and all of those great sort of songwritery things. And, and so what brought so you were in Norway sing, uh, performing music in the schools and uh, I read political songs yeah, yeah, yeah they have a they have a whole mandate over there about like arts programming in their in their schools and I know somebody who works for the organization that sort of books all that stuff and um. I've done a lot of sort of music education and music outreach over the years and so I just designed this program and they bought it and, and it was about political American songwriters and it was Randy Newman and and, um, and Billy Holiday and Bob Dylan and Pete Seeger and Woody Guthrie and all this stuff uh, and, uh, and so Phil, we go over there Phil Ox? three or four times a year but is Phil Ox one of them was it Phil Ox that we didn't did do, we, we didn't do any Phil Ox stuff but Phil Ox um but he would fall in there, yeah. I because he did I, the. I loved it. W- w- did he do the day of? Dis- uh, we're on the edge of destruction, or this the eve of. Dis- I, eve of destruction. Oh, was that a Phil Oak song? I, I feel like it was, but I'm gonna Google. He did. He did. He did a song called "I'm Not Marching Anymore." That's it. <laughs> yeah. He might have done eve of destruction. But anyway, no, he was like, a, yeah, he was a, amazing political songwriter and actually the Phil Oaks record there's a Phil Oaks record called The Pleasures of the Harbor which is a big sort of orchestral record of his which was sort of an inspiration for the wall to wall session oh. record in terms of like the sound there you go see everything everything's connecting yeah wow well like how- you're, you're an excellent interviewer <laughs> I didn't know how to say Phil the- Oaks name Oh well, <laughs> I, uh, I now I do though because you're you're a teacher and you've taught me about political songs. That's right. That's what we're here to do: teach Can, each other and communicate. Absolutely, the whole thing. Absolutely, <laughs> Chris Mills, and you're excellent at it. And tell me about Bloomed. Uh, Bloomed is um, that is a song that um, that is on the new record. And that song is all about sort of being present. It's having a really hard time sort of focusing and being in situations. You know, you know what I mean? Like being being somewhere when you're there, 
mm-hmm. as opposed to sort of being somewhere physically and somewhere else mentally. Um, and so that's kind of where that that song comes from, you uh-huh. know. It's, uh, it's all about being with a person in the in the moment, and uh, and all the things that that uh, you know you kind of go through to get there. That's what that song's about. Right, like uh, what do they call that? Uh, yeah, being present or mindfulness is that it? Mindfulness, yes, I uh, learned that word recently as well. Um, yeah, it's sort of about mindfulness. Oh, you know, that's something I've been trying to learn myself. That's difficult to do. Yeah, yeah, it's very difficult, but it's important. You know, there, if you don't, if you don't pay attention, you miss it. There's a cartoon hanging on my fridge that it shows a guy waiting at a bus stop but instead of it saying a bus stop it says uh, uh, you must be completely in the moment between these hours 3pm to 5pm <laughs> it like reminding you to be in the moment you know and- that's awesome well because you know all the stuff in the future is going to happen anyway right right like you're going to live through that when it actually happens you may as well live through the things that you're going through now. Now, that's so true. Sense, maybe not. I, you know, I think. Uh, yeah, I used to spend a lot of time worrying about whatever was next. Yeah, now I just kind of worry about what. Now I just kind of enjoy whatever it is I'm doing. Wherever you I, go, there you are. That's right, Bunker Bonsai. <laughs> right. Very cool. It all comes back to Jeff Goldblum. <laughs> yeah. Right. <laughs> All things. Very uh, cool. Okay, so let's play Bloom. This is from Chris Mills and the Distant Stars is his band. Uh, and oh, I wanted to ask you real quick, how did that name come about? The D- Distant Stars. Oh, that's a, there's a song on the record called "The Sweet Year After," and it's got a thing about distant stars in it, and I, I like that sort of idea. Also, because the record was made by people sort of from all over the world. So like the band that made the record, oh, we all okay. live like hundreds of miles away from each other. Oh. Very distant. Right, because it's all over the world, these yeah. pe- Christer. But we're all together on the, on the one, but we're all together on the, on the record. Excellent. So we will always be existing together right there. <laughs> Forever. It's- Forever, or at least until people stop listening to this particular album. Oh, I don't want to live in that world. (laughs) Well, this is Bloom from the album Alexandria. It's Chris Mills and the Distant Stars on Mike's Daily Podcast.
Chris Mills and the Distant Stars with Bloomed as we go outside the last place on Earth where we bring you Mike's Daily Podcast somewhere in Podcastro Valley, California. The finale of our Into an Interview. And here's today's podcast picture. And you can see a picture of what he looks like. Chris Mills right there. The podcast picture. Check it out now at mikesdailypodcast.com. Michael Masu, I want to tell you that I am going to marry... The man that makes a Brussels sprout ice cream. Good for you. That's wonderful. Everybody doesn't everybody get all giddy and happy when they find out about somebody getting engaged. Oh, we're not getting engaged. We're getting married right now. What? I now pronounce you two's man and wife day. You're married now. Do you know that? Wow. Congratulations to you, Brussels sprout ice cream man maker. Thank you. It's been really great because I'm from Norway. That's not a Norwegian accent. Yes, it is. No, it's not. Madam, he's lying. What? You're lying to me? And we just been married for three seconds? I'm divorcing you. Ooh. That was quick. But in some ways, living here in California, not quick at all. Tomorrow we will bring you the finale of the Into an Interview with... Chris Mills. Plus, we will hear from Shelley Shuhart, Floyd the Floorman, and John Deere the Engineer. Mike, I want to get a Pano player so that I can take the Pano and add an I to it, and then it'll be something worth watching, Day. Uh, Prano player? You put the I in the wrong spot, Day. Hmm. But an R is a wonderful letter. You can never put that in the wrong spot. You're a weirdo. Do you know that? Mike's Daily Podcast is written and produced and performed by Mike Matthews. His podcast is super easy to find. Download or listen to his show and read his blog at mikesdailypodcast.com. Email Mike now at mikesdailypodcast at gmail.com. See you tomorrow. Bye. Lubutan. Lubutan. Lubutan.